Hi everyone, welcome to my channel, Onita here. Today, well, tonight when I'm actually filming this, but today's video is going to be a book haul. And she's a big one, so I hope you're ready. I'm going to try and give a brief synopsis for each book because I have around 40 plus books that I hauled. A lot of them were on sale and a lot of them are books that I have an interest in that I'll definitely be reading. I'll try my best to give a brief synopsis just to get through those, bearing in mind that when I get around to reading them, I'll give you a bit more of a detailed synopsis with them. So let's get on with it. Okay, before I do, apologies for the lighting and apologies for the sound of my fan. First one is Later by Stephen King. Think of it as the sixth sense with a Stephen King twist. The Patient by Jasper DeWitt. A young psychiatrist through a series of online posts recounts a harrowing time in his early career about a patient of his. His patient, a man in his 40s, who was originally admitted when he was six. The patient has no known diagnosis. His symptoms seem to evolve over time, and every person who has attempted to treat him has either been driven to madness or suicide. Throne of Glass by Sarah J. Maas. Selena Sadothian is the world's greatest assassin who, after being betrayed by someone she knows, is held as a prisoner in the salt mines of Andovia. A man offers her the chance of freedom, become a champion in a tournament and win her freedom. The Shining by Stephen King. Jack Torrance's new job as the off-season caretaker of the Old Overlook Hotel is the perfect chance for a fresh start, a chance to reconnect and spend more time with his wife and son and to focus on his writing. But strange and terrible forces gathering around the Overlook are about to disrupt all of that. The only one of the family to notice the strange occurrences is Jack's son, Danny, a five-year-old with a unique gift. Love the cover of this. It's got like this retro feel and I absolutely adore it. As well as I adore the cover of Misery. Misery is about an author who has a car crash and about a crazed fan who takes care of that author in the car crash. In exchange for him to change the ending to his wildly popular series in which she hated the ending of. I've also bought a duology, the first one being We Hunt the Flame, which is the first in the series by Hafsa Faisal. If I've pronounced this name incorrectly, I apologize. Zafira is the hunter, forced to disguise herself as a man. She risks everything to provide for her family. Nasir is the Prince of Death, a feared assassin who was forever bound to the command of his father, the Sultan. Both are legends in their kingdom, but neither wants to be. And when Safira embarks on a dangerous quest to return magic to the suffering land, Nasir is sent on a similar mission. But as their journey unfolds, an ancient evil begins to stir. I also have the duology as well, We Free the Stars, also by the same author. It's a finale, like I said. These are both a duology. A cover I am absolutely obsessed with, Ariadne by Jennifer Saint. As princess of Crete and daughters of the fearsome King Minos, Ariadne and her sister Phaedra grow up hearing the terrible bellows of the Minotaur from the labyrinth beneath the palace. The Minotaur, Minos's great sh greatest shame and Ariadne's brother, demands blood every year. When Theseus, prince of Athens, arrives in Crete as a sacrifice to the beast, Ariadne falls in love with him. But helping Theseus defeat the monster means betraying her family, and Ariadne knows that in a world ruled by most mercurial gods, drawing their attention can cost you everything. Ariadne has heard many tales of women being punished for the acts of men. She is determined to set her own fate, but will her decision to help Theseus ensure her happy her happy ending? Or will she find herself sacrificed for her lover's ambition? I also have Hamnet by Ma... Yeah, Maggie O'Farrell. On a summer's day in 1956, a young girl in Stratford-upon-Avon takes to her bed with a fever. Her twin brother, Hamnet, searches everywhere for help. Why is nobody at home? The mother, Agnes, is over a mile away in the garden where she grows medicinal herbs. The father is working in London. Neither parent knows that one of, their chil that one of the children will not survive the week. Hamnet is a novel inspired by the son of a famous playwright. It is a story of the bond between twins and of a marriage pushed to the brink by grief. It is also the story of a kestrel and its mistress, a flea that boards a ship in Alexandria, and a glovemaker's son who flouts convention in pursuit of the woman he loves. Above all, it is the tender reimagining of a boy whose life has been all but forgotten 
but whose name was given to one of the most celebrated plays ever written. Neverwhere by Neil Gaiman. Under the streets of London there's a place most people could never even dream of. A city of monsters and saints, murderers and angels, knights in armour and pale girls in black velvet. This is, the, this is the city of the people who have fallen between the cracks. Richard Mayhew, a young businessman, is going to find out more than enough about, his, about this other London. A single act of kindness catapults him out of his workday existence and into a world that is at once eerily familiar and utterly bizarre. And the strange destiny awaits him down here, beneath, this, beneath his native city, Neverwhere. I have read a Neil Gaiman book before, loved it, a little scared to read more of his books because I'm just really worried that they're not going to live up to the expectations that I have for his books. Next year I'm going to be reading Neil Gaiman. Flames of Chaos. It is the first book in the Legacies of the Nine Realms trilogy by Amelia Hutchins. From Amelia Hutchins, award-winning author of the Fae Chronicles and author of the internationally Best-selling series Playing With Monster comes a new dark and sensual epic fantasy series set in a world of magic realms, mystical creatures, royal intrigue and betrayal. Join Aria Primrose He- oh my god, He Kate? Okay. On a journey of self-discovery as she races to find her missing twin sister and save her family from a war that's been brewing within the Nine Realms for over 500 years. The Crown of Gilded Bones, the third book in the Blood and Ash in the From Blood and Ash series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. I have already read this book. Poppy is a maid. This is like basically about what the series is about. I'm not going to give you a synopsis of what the third one is because it'll spoil things for you. So the series is about Poppy who was a maiden. She's been sheltered for nearly her whole life. She can't talk to anyone, touch anyone or experience pleasure and is living the sheltered life up until the day of her ascension which is said to be a great honour. A young guard who is quickly climbing up the ranks is tasked with the job of making sure that Poppy goes through with her ascension. That's as basic and simple and quick and easy as I can make it, without spoiling anything. Waking God, which is the second book in the Themis Files trilogy by Sylvain Nouvelle, a book I have also read this year and absolutely really enjoyed it. About a young girl, so what the series is basically about without telling you the synopsis of the second book because spoilers you know. So the series is about a young girl who goes for a ride on her bike when she falls in a hole into the hands of a giant metal hand. That same girl is now grown up and is in charge of a scientific mission to so find the other parts of this robot and to discover the truth about the robot. I have also bought and read the last book in the trilogy, Only Human, by Sylvain Nouvelle. Project Tail Mary by Andy Weir. A man wakes up to find that he is stuck in a spaceship in outer space along with two other people who are dead. He doesn't know what his name is or even why he is even in outer space. Through a series of flashbacks, his memories come back to him and he realises that he is humanity's only and best bet at saving Earth. Desolation of Devil's Acre, book 6 and the final book in the series of Miss Peregrine's Home for Peculiar Children by Ransom Riggs. Jacob realises that he has an ability to see things that others can't. He comes across this group of children with peculiar abilities and he gets sucked into this world. He gets sucked into this whole new world that feels like home to him. He learns more about his abilities and the world of the peculiar dim. That's as basic as I can get with this. Volume 4 in the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman. Charlie, an openly gay teenage boy, and Nick, a teenage boy who realises that he could be bisexual, ends up being friends at school, which later turns into a very wholesome, heartwarming series about love, what it means to be in love, and the challenges that will be faced when in relationships. Lives of Saints by Lee Bardugo. I consider this to be a sort of companion novella to the Grisha world and the Grisha series. It's about all the saints that are in the universe of the Grisha or Shadow and Bone Universe, Grisha Universe, you know what I'm talking about. Circus of Wonders by Elizabeth McNeil. 1866 in a coastal village in southern England, Nell picks violets for a living. Set apart from her community because of the birthmarks that speckle her skin, Nell's world is her beloved brother and devotion to the sea. But when Jasper Jupiter's Circus of Wonders arrives in the village, Nell is kidnapped. Her father has sold her, promising Jasper Jupiter his very own leopard girl. It is the greatest betrayal of Nell's life, but as her fame grows and she finds friendship with the other performers and Jasper's gentle brother, Toby, she begins to wonder if joining the show is the best thing that has, that has ever happened to her. In London, newspapers describe Nell as the eighth wonder of the world. 
figurines are cast in her image and crowds rush to watch her soar through the air. But who gets to tell Nell's story? What happens when her fame threatens to eclipse that of the showman who bought, who bought her? And as she falls in love with Toby, can he detach himself from his past and the terrible secret that binds him to his brother? Moving from the pleasure gardens of Victorian London to the battle-scarred plains of the Crimea, Circus of Wonders is an astonishing story about power and ownership, of fame and the threat of invisibility. I call this book The Greatest Showman, but without the musical aspect. Girl in the Walls by AJ News. Eventually every hidden thing is found. Elise knows every inch of the house. She knows which boards will creak. She knows where the gaps are in the walls. She knows which parts can take her in, hide her away. It's home after all. The home her parents made for her and home is where you stay no matter what. Eddie calls the same house as home. He is almost a teenager now and must no longer believe in the girl he sometimes sees from the corner of his eye. He needs her to disappear, but when his older brother senses her too, they are faced with the question, how do they get rid of someone they aren't even sure exists? And if they cast her out, what other threats might they invite in? Empress of Sultan Fortune, uh, The Singing Hills Book 1, I don't know if it's going to be a trilogy or not, or just like a series, by Nevo. A young royal from the far north is sent to south for a political marriage and an empire reminiscent of imperial China. Her brothers are dead, her armies and their war mammoths long defeated and caged behind their borders. Alone and sometimes reviled, she must choose her allies carefully. Rabbit, a handmaiden, sold by her parents to the palace for the lack of five baskets of dye, befriends the emperor's lonely new wife and gets more than she bargained for. Get a Life Chloe Brown, the first book in the Brown Sisters trilogy, I believe, by Talia Hibbert. Chloe Brown has a chronic illness. I believe she has a chronic illness. And she writes down this list to make her get a life. She enlists the help of Red Morgan to help her with her list of things she wants to do to get a life. And I have also heard that this book is enemies to lovers romance. The Midnight Library by Matt Haig. Between life and death there is a library and within that library the shelves go on forever. Every book provides a chance to try another life you could have lived. To see how things would be if you had made other choices. Would you have done anything different if you had the choice to undo your regrets? The protagonist in this book commits suicide. Her spirit, I'm guessing her spirit, travels to this place called the Midnight Library where she gets a chance to see about all the ways in which her life could have changed if she had have gone on a different path in life. Aurora Rising, the first book in the Aurora Cycle Trilogy by Amy Kaufman and Jay Kristoff. The year is 2380 and the graduating cadets of Aurora Academy are being assigned to their first missions. Star pupil Tyler Jones is ready to recruit the squad of his dreams, but his boneheaded heroism sees him stuck with the dregs nobody else in the academy would touch. A cocky diplomat with a black belt in sarcasm, a sociopath scientist with a fondness for shooting her bunk mates. <laughs> she sounds like fun. A smart ass tech wizard with the galaxy's biggest chip on, her sh on his shoulder. An alien warrior with, her anger, with anger management issues. A tomboy pilot who's totally not into him, in case you are wondering. And Ty's squad isn't even his biggest problem. That'd be Aurora Jialin, O'Malley, the girl he's just rescued from interdimensional space. Trapped in cryo sleep for two centuries, Ori is a girl out of time and out of her depth. But she could be the catalyst that starts a war millions of years in the making. And Tyler's squad of losers, discipline cases, and misfits might just be the last hope for the entire galaxy. Binti, which is the first book in the Binti trilogy by Nedi Okorafor. Her name is Binti and she is the first of the Himba people ever to be offered a place at um Umza University, the finest institution of higher learning in the galaxy. But to accept the offer will mean giving up her place in her, in her family to travel between the stars among strangers who do not share her ways, her ways or respect her customs. Knowledge comes at a cost, one that Binti is willing to pay. But her journey will not be easy. The world she seeks to enter has long warred with the Meduse, an ancient, an alien race that has become the stuff of nightmares. Umza University has wronged the Meduse, and Binti's stellar travel will bring her within her deadly reach. If Binti hopes to survive the legacy of a war not of her making, she will need both the gifts of her people and the wisdom enshrined within the university itself, but first she has to make it there alive. The Wolf Den by Elodie Harper. It is set in Pompeii, it's like a historical fiction fantasy. Amara is 
sold as a slave, well not a slave, as like a brothel in Pompeii's infamous brothel um, with a man she despises, sorry, owned by a man she despises is where she works. She is forced to hide her talents because her value is only in her body and worth pleasing other people, mainly men obviously. But Amira's spirit is far from broken. She finds companionship with other women and she finds comfort in the laughter and the dreams of other women and the dreams that they share. Um, the streets of Pompeii are alive with opportunity. The lower slave can secure a reversal in fortune. Amara has learned that everything in the city has its price, but how much is her freedom going to cost her? The Sister Song by Lucy Holland. Story about three sisters. They inherit the war the war-torn land abandoned by the Romans. One sister, River, can cure others. Cain is battles to be seen as a king's son, although born a daughter, which makes me believe that there could be a trans character in here, which is really good to see because you don't get to see it in a fantasy that often. And Sin dreams of love, longing, and adventure. Um, all three fear a life of confinement within the hold, the people's last bastion against the invading Saxons. However, change comes when ash falls from the sky, bringing Murdhin, Murdhin, Meddler, and Magician. The siblings discover the power that lies within them and the land, but fate also brings Tristan, a warrior whose secrets will tear them apart. River, Cain, and Sin become entangled in a web of treachery and heartbreak and must fight to forge their own paths. It's a story that will shape the destiny of Britain. The Strangers We Know by Pip Drysdale. Imagine seeing a loving husband on a dating app. Now imagine that's the best thing to happen to you all week. When Charlie sees a man who was a spitting image of her husband Oliver on a dating app, her heart stops. Her first desperate instinct is to tell herself she must be mistaken. After all, she only caught a glimpse from a distance as her friends were laughingly swiping through the men on offer. But no matter how much she tries to push her feelings aside, she can't because she took that photo on their honeymoon. She just can't let it go. Suddenly, other signs of betrayal begin to add up, and so Charlie does the only thing she can think of to defend her position. She signs up to the app to catch Oliver in the, to catch Oliver in the act. But Charlie soon discovers that infidelity is the least of her problems. Nothing is as it seems, and nobody is who she thinks they are. Storm and Fury, book one in the Harbinger series by Jennifer L. Armantrout. 18-year-old Trinity Marrow may be going blind, but she can see and communicate with ghosts and spirits. Her unique gift is part of a secret so dangerous that she's been in hiding for years in an isolated compound fiercely guarded by wardens. Gargoyle shapeshifters who protect humankind from demons. If the demons discover the truth about Trinity, they'll devour her flesh and bone to enhance their own powers. When wardens from another clan arrive with disturbing reports that something out there is killing both demons and wardens, Trinity's safe world implodes. Not the least because one of the outsiders is the most annoying but fascinating person she's ever met. Zane has secrets of his own that will upend her world yet again, but working together becomes imperative once demons breach the compound and Trinity's secret comes to light. To save her family and maybe the world, she'll have to put her trust in Zane but all bets are off as a supernatural war is released, is unleashed. I also have the secret um, to the Harbinger, Harbinger series, which is Rage and Ruin. The Bridge Kingdom, which is the first book in the Bridge Kingdom duology by Danielle L. Johnson. Jensen, I mean. A warrior princess trained in isolation, Lara is driven by two certainties. The first is that King Aaron of the Bridge Kingdom is her enemy, and the second is that she'll be the she'll be the one to bring him to his knees. The only route through a storm-ravaged world, the Bridge Kingdom enriches itself and deprives its rivals, including Lara's, harm, Lara's homeland. So when she centers a bride under the guise of peace, Lara is prepared to do whatever it takes to fracture its impenetrable defenses and the defenses of its king. Yet as she infiltrates her new home and gains a deeper understanding of the war to possess the bridge, Lara begins to question whether she's the hero or the villain, and as her feelings for Aaron transform from frosty hostility to fierce passion, Lara must choose which kingdom she'll save and which kingdom she'll destroy. Velocity Weapon, which is the first book in the Protectorate series, trilogy I mean by Megan O'Keefe. Santa and Byron Groove were siblings destined for greatness, a high-flying sergeant. Sergeant? Santa has the skills to take down any enemy combatant. 
Barman is a savvy politician who aims to use his new political position to prevent conflict from escalating into total destruction. However, on a routine manoeuvre, Sandra loses consciousness when her gunship is blown out of the sky. Instead of finding herself in friendly hands, she awakens 230 years later on a deserted enemy warship controlled by an AI who calls himself Biro. The war is lost and the star system is dead. Ada Prime and its rival Icarion have wiped each other from the universe. Now separated by time and space, Santa and Byron must fight to put things right. I actually read a little bit of this, like a little bit of a like sampler, and it is so good. Like it really is. It's very accessible, so it's like very easy to understand. I have Threads Needle by Carrie Thomas. It is the first book in a four book series, I believe. Anna's aunt has always warned her of the dangers of magic, its twists, its knots, its deadly consequences. Now Anna counts down the days to the ceremony that will bind her magic forever, until she meets Effie and Attis. They open her eyes to a London she never knew existed, a shop that sells memories, a secret library where the librarian feeds off words, a club where revelers lose themselves in a haze of spells. But as she is swept deeper into this world, Anna begins to wonder if her aunt was right all along. Is her magic a gift or a curse? This book I have here is a special, like it's a limited edition. The cover is at least. Magician by Raymond E. Feist. Feist? Feast? To the forest on the shore of the Kingdom of the of the Isles, the orphan pug came to study with the master magician Cl Colgan. His courage won him a place at court and the heart of a lovely princess, but he was ill at ease with normal wizardry. Yet his strange magic may save two worlds from dark beings who open space-time to renew the age-old battle between order and chaos. Shadow of the Fox by Julie Kagawa. I believe it is a first in a trilogy as well. Now, for whoever holds the scroll of a thousand prayers, a new wish will be granted. A new age is about to dawn. Raised by monks in the isolated Silent Twins Temple, Yumiko has trained all her life to hide her yokai nature. Half kid soon, half human, her skill with illusion is matched only by her penchant for mischief until the day her home is burnt to the ground. The adopted family is brutally slain and she is forced to flee for her life when the temple's greatest treasure, one part of the ancient scroll. There are many who would claim the dragon's wish for their own. Cage Tatsumi, a mysterious samurai of the Shadow Clan, is one such hunter, under orders to retrieve the scroll at any cost. Fate brings Cage and Yumiko together. With the promise to lead him to the scroll, an uneasy alliance is formed, offering Yumiko her best hope for survival. But he seeks what she has hidden away, and her deception could ultimately tear them both apart. With an army of demons at her heels and the unlikeliest of allies at her side, Yumiko's secrets are more than a matter of life or death. They are the key to the fate of the world itself. Okay, so my camera battery ran flat, and I'm just going to finish off this book haul on my phone. So I also have the book The Harp of Kings by Juliet Marillia. 18 year old Leah Byrne, I'm pronouncing that name wrong, I apologize. She is a powerful singer and an expert whistle player. Her brother has a voice to melt the hardest heart and a rare talent on the harp. But Leah Byrne's burning ambition is to join the elite warrior band on Swan Island. She and her brother train there to compete for places and find themselves joining a mission while still candidates. Their unusual blend of skills makes them ideal for this particular job which requires going undercover as a travelling minstrels. For Swan Island trains both warriors and spies. Their mission to find and retrieve a precious harp, an ancient symbol of kingship which has gone mysteriously missing. If the instrument is not played at the upcoming coronation, the candidate will not be accepted and the people could revolt. Faced with plotting courtiers and tight-lipped druids, an insightful storyteller and a boorish crown prince, Leia Byrne soon realises an other world power may be meddling in the affairs of the kingdom. When ambition clashes with conscience, Leia Byrne must make a bold decision and is faced with a heartbreaking choice. I also have The Maidens by Alex Michaelides. I've already read this book. In St. Christopher's College, Cambridge is a closed world to most. For Mariana Andros, a group therapist struggling through her private grief, it's where she met her late husband, for her niece, Zoe, is the tragic scene of her best friend's murder. As memory and mystery entangle Mariana, she finds a society full of secrets, which has been shocked to its core by the murder of one of its own. Because behind its idyllic beauty is a web of jealousy and rage, 
which emanates from an exclusive set of students known only as the Maidens. They group under the sinister influence of the enigmatic Professor Edward Fosker, a man who seems to know more than anyone about the murders and the victims, and the man who will become the prime suspect in Mariana's investigation and obsession which will unravel everything. Okay, now to go over here because I forgot about a book. Okay, let me see if I can wrangle this around. I have, ouch, the Neil Gaiman Reader by, I don't know who, Neil Gaiman. It says down the bottom a foreword by Marlon James. James, Marlon James. This is basically like a really big like collection of stories by Neil Gaiman. And it's basically like, if you don't know where to start, this is the book you read because he has written so many books and sometimes it's a little bit confusing about where to start. So that is what that one is about. It's just like a bunch of stories about like his books, basically. I also have, if I can find it, The Rings of Tolkien. Um, I have a few of these kind of books. Um, this is about the rings and the Lord of the Rings and their legends pretty simple don't need to say too much more about that apologies about that close up then my goodness we're nearly there and my throat is screaming at me to hurry the fuck up rabbits by terry miles rabbits is a mysterious alternate reality game so vast it uses our global reality as its canvas since the game first started in 1959 10 iterations have appeared and nine winners have been declared Okay, I'm just going to give you a quick summary. The winner's identities are unknown and the prize is also unknown. Some say it could be NSA or CIA recruitment, vast wealth, immortality, or perhaps a key to unlocking the secrets of the universe. The deeper you get, the more deadly the game becomes. Players have died in the past. The body count is rising. The 11th round is, ab is about to begin. K is a rabbit's obsessive. Um, he's been... Trying to find a way into the game for years, a pathway opens up for him or her when Kay is approached by billionaire Alan Scarpio, who was the alleged winner of the sixth iteration. Scarpio says something has gone wrong with the game and that Kay needs to fix it before 11 starts or the whole world will pay the price. Five days later, Scarpio is declared missing. Two weeks after that, K blows the deadline and Eleven begins. And suddenly the fate of the universe is at stake. You and me on vacation, or people we meet on vacation depending on if you live in America or the UK or Australia by Emily Henry. Two friends, ten summer trips, the last chance to fall in love. Twelve summers ago, Poppy and Alex meet. They hate each other and are pretty confident they'll never speak again. Eleven summers ago... They're forced to share a ride home from college, and by the end of it, a friendship is formed and a pact every year, one vacation together. Ten summers ago, Alex discovers his fear of flying on the way to Vancouver. Poppy holds his hands the whole way. Seven summers ago, they get far too drunk and narrowly avoid getting matching tattoos in New Orleans. Two summers ago, it all goes wrong. This summer, Poppy asks Alex to join her on one last trip, a trip that will determine the rest of their lives. The Gentleman's Guide to Vice and Virtue, which is book one in the Montague Siblings series by Mackenzie Lee. Henry Monty Montague was born and bred to be a gentleman, but he was never one to be tamed. The finest boarding schools can't seem to... Like, keep him in line, keep him in check. Monty embarks on his grand tour of Europe, his quest for a life filled with pleasure and a vice is in danger of coming to an end. Not only does his father expect him to take over the family's estate upon his return, but Monty is also nursing an impossible crush on his best friend and travelling companion, Percy. Still, it isn't in Monty's nature to give up, even with his younger sister Felicity in tow. He vows to make this year-long escapade one last hedonistic hurrah and flirt with Percy from Paris to Rome. But when one of Monty's reckless decisions turns the trip abroad into a harrowing manhunt that spends across Europe, it calls into question everything he knows, including his relationship with the boy he adores. Back over to my bookshelf again because I keep forgetting books. I also have three comic books. They are a trilogy and they're just like one trilogy and that's the last one. It is the Skyward trilogy, nothing to do with Brandon Sanderson. One day gravity on Earth suddenly became a fraction of what it is now. 20 years later, humanity has adapted to its new low gravity reality and to Willa Fowler who was born just before G-Day it's pretty awesome who wouldn't want to be able to soar through the air but there are dangers too and not just the fact that with one wrong step 
You could go flying off the face of the earth. Some dangers are closer to home than she knows. I've got the second volume. Then I've got the third and last volume. I have bought a book I'm currently reading, which is Siege and Storm, book two in the Shadow and Bone trilogy. We all know what Shadow and Bone is. And it's popular enough that I don't think I need to say what it is. Part of me, hiccup. I don't think this video will go, will go too well because of the different ways of filming. And I apologize for that because the damn camera will rain out a battery. I'm going to leave it at that. I'm going to give my voice a rest because it is screaming at me to stop talking and shut up. I'm going to put all my books away. And if you like the video... If you don't, I wouldn't blame you. But if you did like it, thumbs up. Comment down below. What books have you bought? Have you read any of these books? Are they any good? Let me know. Subscribe if you want to to see more content from me. I will see you in the next video. Bye.